Thank you for being here. We know we're a little bit uh, behind on the schedule, and you didn't have a time to grab a coffee, right, on your way here. But uh, again, my name is Francisco Garcia. I'm the director for the Center for Online Learning and Teaching Technology. With me, of course, Elizabeth Samaron. She is the lead instructional designer in one of our campuses at the university. So before we start with the presentation, I would also like to introduce and, and thank uh, Dr. Cynthia Brown here in the back. She is uh, the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley Provost, Deputy Provost, and I guess the most important thing, she's my boss. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for being here, Dr. Brown. Thank you for taking the time for being here. So this morning, we're gonna talk about large online courses and how this uh, initiative was a, a solution for the, the demand of uh, uh, students wanting to take courses, and more specifically, uh, online courses. We all know that the distance education continues to grow every year, right? I was reading some uh, stats from uh, Babson and, and large online learning consortium stats. <clears throat> and uh, this past fiscal year, distance education grew 5.6% uh, compared with the previous year. So that's, that's about 6.3 million of students taking at least one online course, or distance education course, I should say. Um, that's 39%, 31 31.6% 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 31%, 
keep in mind quality all the time. So that's why it's the reason of having these two icons here. So we're a quality matters institution. I don't know if you're familiar with quality matters. Yes. Uh, we also belong to uh, the online learning consortium. So they have a scorecard mm -hmm. for quality assurance, quality matters. They have what they call a rubric for quality assurance too. So we went to um, quality matters. And in fact, 612 faculty and staff members from the university are certified on managing the applying the quality matters rubric for the courses. That certification is required to teach online courses at Florida University. Mm -hmm. um, there are other certifications like peer reviews and facilitators. In fact, um, all my instructional designers, all the instructional designers from my team, they're certified to be facilitators for applying the quality matters wow. rubric. So quality is our priority in, at the university. Again, even though we are Growing and growing, we never sacrifice quality. All right, so Center for Online Learning, again, we're an academic division, an academic affairs division uh, unit. Even though we deal with technology, but we also deal with pedagogy and best practices for teaching online. So yeah, we're not an IT, though we deal with technology a lot. We've got a good relationship with IT. Um, but uh, we're in the academic side. So what do we do at the center? Of course, we provide support to faculty and students in this teaching and learning process, even if it's online, or mainly online and hybrid, but also if you're using our technologies, we support you as a faculty member. Again, quality, excellence, and innovation. Those are the pillars of our department. We, we focus a lot on faculty succeed, success. We know it's It'll be uh, strategic for every university to be to focus on the student success. And I mean, we, we also have that on our department, but we also work a lot with faculty, so we focus a lot on faculty success. Because we know that if faculty succeed in the classroom, either face to face or online, I mean, the student will succeed for sure. Um, one last bullet here. Yes, we're a research focused uh, department. So we had a research unit with our own department where the, uh, we work with faculty and go over the research on these uh, initiatives, these theories that were implemented. So we let the faculty know if what we're doing is working or not. So we can, um, again, we can move forward or looking for, for new, new initiatives. So that's what it is. So this is what we call the wall of fame. Those are our online programs that we offer at the university, um, 36 plus courses, although if you notice on the accelerated programs, because we offer traditional 16 week, but we also offer uh, uh, seven week programs. So on the accelerated program, notice that we have the MBA, but we have different tracks on it. So it's just one program, but it's got different specializations, different tracks. Um, like I said, most of the programs are graduate, although we have some, a few on the undergrad and another two, one, one graduate and two, on, uh, one undergraduate and two graduate programs are coming online. All right, so let's talk about the challenge, the challenge that we were facing at our university. Um, we were approached by the provost's office because they were running some reports, they were changing some reports at the time of the registration, they were seeing that the, um, the students trying to register or the list of students was like more in the wait list than the actual student registration. So some of them have more than 90 students on the wait list. So that was a challenge for us in terms of providing access to students, access to education. Um, so, we talk about it and, and they propose these solutions. We work with, the, with academic affairs and, and came up with this, with this solution, which is, uh, of course, increasing the seats uh, or the enrollment, I'm sorry, increasing the enrollment in online courses. Um, there was also a thought of increasing the face to face um, courses, but again, it's, it's kind of a challenge because if you don't have the infrastructure, you know, we have the facilities, it's, it's a little bit hard to, to do that. So um, our provost office, um, or deputy provost, turned to us and they said, why don't we do a, uh, or increase 
the enrollment capacity in online courses. Of course, this brought another challenge, which is the faculty member, right? I don't know if you're, are you a faculty member teaching online? So can you imagine yourself seeing, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 students in the, in the roster, and then the following day, you might have 60, 75, <laughs> right? All that interaction, I mean, keeping that interaction, keeping those discussion forums, uh, reviewing those papers that you have to, to grade. So it was kind of a challenge. So we decided to also assist faculty on this, uh, on this, uh, on this challenge. So we provide some of the options, some of the professional development. We provide, of course, quality matters again, quality, quality. And you will see, you will hear that word through the whole presentation. Um, so provide the professional development so we can, so the faculty should be able to manage those large online courses. Mm -hmm. We know that teaching online is, is a huge change from online, I mean from face to face. Now teaching large online, that's again another, another challenge. So, but this is, this was a voluntary basis. So we run some, uh, um, we publicize this to faculty, we advertise this, and, and, um, and again, we want to motivate faculty because it, was a, it wasn't a, a required to do that. It, it wasn't a requirement. It was on a voluntary basis. So in order to motivate a little bit the faculty, we provide also some stipends if they go through, through the workshop and, and, and the other qualifying criteria. So those were the rules, right? I'm sorry. I just okay. <laughs> uh, so those were the rules. First, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we have to... Um, in order for the faculty to, uh, like, let's say, to qualify for this uh, initiative, first time it was a pilot, of course, is um, <laughs> they have to uh, increase the cap to at least 75 students. And we can talk about all the details in terms of why those numbers. Um, but the minimum enrollment, so you don't have to have the full class on it. At the 60 students enrollment, then you qualify for that. But not, it's not only that, of course, you have to be certified to, to teach online and also complete the Teaching Large Online workshop that Elizabeth is going to work, I mean, is going to talk about uh, more in detail about the workshop. So the workshop they have also to develop, besides the workshop, they have to develop six modules from the actual course. And of course, request academic coaches. And we're going to talk about academic coaches in a minute. Uh, lastly, once they complete all of these, faculty will receive at first about fifteen hundred uh, dollars, but now we move into a two thousand two thousand dollars stipend after they complete all of this. All right, the workshop. Yes, I'm gonna stop talking here and pass the stage to me. Thank you, Francisco. Um, talking about uh, about the workshop. Um, we, the, the lead instructional designers, uh, provide the workshop to the faculty, uh, always with the support of the instructional designers one. Just like Francisco mentioned, uh, all of us are qualified by Quality Matters. All, our, all of us are certified to provide the workshop online and face-to-face, -face. okay? The workshop that we, we provide, it consists of nine modules, and we'll take a look at the course that we have uh, developed for the faculty. But all of the modules go into these different uh, aspects of the course, how to create it well and organize it well to provide it to the students without losing quality. Like I said, uh, what we teach is what we preach. We have to have the course on quality so we don't have to lose the quality of the course with the number of students, okay? Um, once again, they must have the teaching uh, large online or the the qualification for quality matters, okay? And I'll I'll show you the course in a minute. Okay. Quality matters again, uh, but there's some modules that cover the quality of the course, uh, where we have the objectives, the assignment, and the activities. We, they all must align, of course, to have a good course. Objectives or outcomes are the most important part of the course, and all, all of, of the alignment is, is reviewed by our instructional designers. Um, we assign 
and a specific instructional designer to each faculty. So they watch them develop the course, they check on technologies, they check on to have authentic assessments, you know, and of course activities that there are gonna be scaffolding to meet those outcomes of the course, okay? Uh, in regards to core design, course design, remember that instructional designer helps the faculty throughout the six modules that they must develop, okay? And they help them with the technologies, with the design. Um, they help them to make the course learner center, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to the student needs assessment. What type of audience <coughs> are you gonna have in your course? Is it a general course? Is it a specific subject you're gonna teach? Or things like that, okay? We structure the course so it's good for the students. We chunk it into modules or weeks. We provide a template. It's not a required template, but it's a start point where faculty can modify the course little by little until it's something that's, you know, it's good for them, okay? <clears throat> we emphasize on setting the expectations of the course and to provide the students with deadlines of assignments, okay? Um, we also emphasize on accessibility, okay? Which is very important for our courses. We, uh, we help them create lessons depending on what type of software they wanna use. We have soft talk and we have integrity that we manage within our department. So we ask faculty what type of training do they want they want to use a soft chalk lesson. And like I said, we'll take a look at a course in a few minutes. Um, we also lecture capture with integrity. We also train the faculty to use this type of software. Nowadays, um, micro lectures is, is the in thing. So we show them how to use the integrity to create mini lectures within their courses. Uh, we help them use the collaborate, okay? So they can learn how to use it for their meetings with the students, with their sessions. Um, and we also take a good look at copyrights. We have our librarian going to uh, give us a little presentation within the course in regards to copyrights, which is also very important for our course. Um, at the end, and also at the beginning of the course, we take a look into the coach's role, responsibilities, how to manage them. Mm -hmm. You know, how communication is very important for, to keep the course running smoothly, of course, with the coaches and with the faculty. And how the faculty is the main person of the course. You know, sometimes, you know, we get the coaches, they wanna take over, but no. <laughs> faculty is, is always the person in charge of the course, sorry. Um, we tell them the importance of having the rubric mm. to grade the students, mm -hmm. to meet inner uh, rater reliability, okay? So uh, we ask them to either provide a rubric for the coaches to grade the students or an example how they want for the coaches to grade, okay? Uh, we help them how to fix the students into different groups and do a, a smart view so they can see how the students are doing. To, to the smart view is mainly to check on the gradebook to see the little groups, what coaches have, this group, this other group, and, okay? Once again, like uh, Francisco mentioned, we have the support of the Deputy Provost Office. Um, we have a partnership with Instructional Connections, which is a provider of the coaches, okay? Uh, once again, it's all based on enrollment. Remember what Francisco said, the cap was 75 or more students, but the enrollment, the actual enrollment, 60, 60 students. And based on enrollment, we provide, we provide uh, the coaches. The coaches have a minimum of a master's degree, okay? They have to have experience within the subject, 
and uh, we, they can help with grading, uh, lead discussion, answer emails, announcements, uh, but always with the direction of the faculty. Remember, they are an extension of the faculty. Okay? Yes. What is the ratio of uh, coaches uh, and students? It depends on the coaches. Uh, experience, uh, a coach could lead uh, 130 students if they are very experienced within the subject, or if it's a new coach, they have 20 to 30 students. Did, I, did that answer the question? Okay. So it all depends uh, on, the, on the enrollment, but also depends on the experience of the coach itself. Okay. Um, so that's a decision that, uh, that is made with, uh, through academic through inst uh, instructional connections. Um, there are coaches that have been working with us for quite some time, so they, they're the experienced one. And they have levels of coaches. If, if, the, if the class has 120 students, there is a lead coach, and then that coach also supervises the other coaches. So there is, there is a model of to, to uh, support the faculty on it. Uh, we also have uh, flexibility in uh, faculty referring a coach, but once again, they must meet the requirements of instructional connections. Yeah, just going back to the coaches, there are coaches um, all over the state, right? Because they're, they're coaching uh, uh, online. Um, but again, if a faculty is being working with a, uh, a grad student or someone who is um, very familiar with the process of the course, faculty can recommend um, that, that student, that grad student, and being a coach for the course. Of course, they have to apply to the instructional connections and all of that, but uh, that's a possibility there, too. And now, <coughs> I guess. Okay, that's it. Any, any other questions with the coaches or any other questions? Um, large online? I have a question. It's not about the academic coaches. So, as with all faculty, as they move from lecturer to, you know, professor, full professor, um, part of the job of the department chair is to evaluate. Yeah. So, you know, we have lots of union mm -hmm. contracts where your department chair can come into a classroom and they're supposed to observe mm -hmm. their teacher, their professor, for 45 minutes or whatever the union contract reads. How are you, how are department chairs doing that piece when it's strictly all online? How do they evaluate their faculty? We have uh, some faculty that uh, we register inside the course, but the faculty of record requests this, this other faculty or whoever is, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be reviewing my course. So we register them into the course and they're able to see how, what, what's going on. But they don't, the faculty member doesn't know. Yes, yeah, they, they, they actually the ones that they're inform us. The oh, they're inviting yeah, them in. It's more of an academic decision. Remember, we're the support unit. We don't dictate what to do and how to do it. And the, the owner of the course is the faculty. Right. So mm -hmm. it all depends. It's coming from the chair or from the dean. Of course, they have to be on So is that across the board that everybody uses that method of another teacher will then be invited? Not no. necessarily. Not necessarily. No. And it's, like I said, it's up to academic. The, the policy at our university is that the faculty arranges for their own peer review of their teaching. Yeah. OK. That is, mm. that is the process, whether it be in a face-to-face -face course or an online course. So if they want to have, and they're required to have so many peer reviews of their teaching per year. So when okay. a faculty is wanting to have their online course reviewed, they're going to in, have the cult add that person into the course. Okay. Okay. We are called the yeah. Center for Online <laughs> Learning and Digital gotcha. Technologies. That's right. Yeah, called the, the acronym. But uh, yeah, again, it, it's an academic affairs uh, yep. for academic decision. But we always provide support mm -hmm. to faculty. Uh, even the, the peer review, um, the quality matters is this actual uh, peer review. Right. Uh, in fact, 25, 26 of our courses have been gone through the uh, Quality Matters official mm -hmm. review. That's great. That's yeah. great. That's a good fact, all the courses from the MBA program are a QM review. That's great. Yeah. That's great. They have the seal. <laughs> yeah, they have the, the seal, the stamp that they're... Yes, sir. Uh, how did the university manage the faculty workload considering the, the number of students? Remember at the bottom we said stipend? <laughs> uh, Dr. Brown, do you want to? 
We do have um, workload adjustments based on enrollment for, for larger. They will get, a, depending on the on the enrollment, they will get incrementally more credit for teaching on, on a large class, whether it's online or face to face. Mm. And you'll be paying us something. Um, you know, to get the full credit, to get double credit, you have to have 250 students in the class. Um, but it, goes, it scales down. So, you know, I don't remember the exact, you know, waiting scheme right now. But I can, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to send me an email, I'll be happy to give it to you. It's not enough from the faculty's perspective. <laughs> there you go. But the other thing I think is important to point out is the faculty must select and approve any coach that's in their class. They are not assigned to the faculty. That's an the faculty point. are given their CVs and their, his, their history and experience, and they choose the coaches they want to have in their class. Right. So it is all faculty driven. Yeah. And, you know, we've had we've had situations where you're two weeks into class and the faculty go, I don't want to work with this coach and instructional connections has been great about switching them out, giving them a new set of potential coaches and making a change. Wow. So it's up to the faculty again. They review the CVEs, they decide this coach uh, will work with me, this will not uh, work. Like Dr. Brown saying, even if, if it's like the middle of the semester and something happened, yeah, they keep it. Because faculty, again, is the owner of the court. They're the ones responsible for the courts. So what process, I'm sorry, did anybody have that? What process do you have for recruiting the coaches? Uh, because obviously you have a database of co coaches that if a faculty member doesn't feel comfortable with one, you have another listing of them. So Yeah, we partner with Instruction and Connections. Right. They're the providers for the coaches. Okay. Um, they have their own process for hiring and all of that. Uh, okay. So they have a huge list of coaches. Okay, so they're not institutional coaches necessarily. Not necessarily, although remember faculty right. can recommend. Right, right, but right. But even if they recommend, they have to go through. So you have a, so you have a contract with instructional Correct. connections. Okay. Yeah. And we've been using instructional connections for whew, seven even, yeah, seven years. We use it for another initiatives at the university okay, too. Okay. So yeah, there's, there's a good relationship with them. Okay. And then being very responsive when there right. is a need for change right. coaches or okay. even at large online courses at the last minute, uh, they don't have coaches available. They're being pretty, pretty okay. good in okay. respond to that, right. to that request. Could I ask, would you be willing to share the rubric that the fellow faculty member is using when they're in the course to, to supervise? I will check and see. Okay, thank you. And I'm not sure it's consistent, but I'll give you a sample. Uh, a sample would be great. I'll hand you my yeah. business card. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> I think one of the major, I, we're, uh, my colleague and I are from the same, uh, we're from CUNY. And one of the things that when you're taking a look at um, the quality of the course, mm -hmm. obviously when it's face to face, we have peer evaluations and such, but for some reason, faculty in my institution anyway, have been very resistant to the peer evaluation online. And I don't understand why that's the case because in essence, when you're a faculty member, you've gone through the process of peer review and peer observation all along. But for some reason, it is a, on an online course or a blended course, it is a very contentious kind of thing. And at right now where we are in my institution is, it's at the departmental level. But the problem is, so the chair organizes it. If the chair is not completely comfortable with blended or online, <laughs> that's not gonna be foremost. But I like your model of, you know, you have to, you, you have to sign up for so many peer evaluations and online and um, blended can, can be part of that. That might be. Well, our faculty are dying to be evaluated because this is one of the sticky wickets of they don't feel like they're being properly evaluated. Oh, you know what I mean? Because this isn't okay. the next step, you know, to get right, to the right, next right, step, right, whether right. it's, you know, going from full, I don't know, all the different rankings. Assistant to full. Yeah, yeah assistant yeah, to full. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, wait, I'm all online and no one, who's come to see me? Because in my right. regular contract, I was supposed to be evaluated, you know, for, you know, 60 minutes. Right, and right. nobody's done this. So we have, the, they, they want us to, right. like, interesting. chop, chop. With us, it's, with us, it's the other, it's the other <laughs> way around, which might be an interesting cultural phenomenon. Now, from the design and development of the course, we got the rubric from Quality Matters. Right, right. right. Have yeah, we, we use Quality Matters okay. as well. We use Quality Matters yeah. as well. But yeah, when the, the, like, uh, the delivery of the course, then we're just the support unit. Right. Yeah. 
So you want to take a look at the workshop yes. in Blackpool real yes. quick? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you manage the assessment process in this larger section of students? A lot of times it's uh, project-based mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, you know, they, they have to work on an essay, things like that. A lot of times uh, either the faculty takes a group of students okay. and, and they work with them. So in, in a way, um, they, they show the coaches how to, how to grade or what they want within the course. So the coaches are part of the process, so they yes. the process. Faculty can help, uh, yes. I mean, coaches can help faculty on the grading on the grade <coughs> part. Yes. Of course, they have to meet with the faculty mm -hmm. first, sure. and that's the recommendation of the rubric and all of that. Yes. And uh, some of the faculty, what they're doing is that they divide the, uh, the, uh, the course in groups so each uh, coach has a group. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the faculty itself has another group. But the faculty rotates depending on the assignment mm -hmm. and, and review different parts of the uh, different groups in terms of the, uh, the assignments and the grading. Do you want to go into the course to, yep. so you guys yep. can see it? Yeah. yeah. And this is going to happen real quick because I think we're, how we're doing on time, I think. You're getting it. It's almost 11. Almost 11. Well, this is the course that we provide, like you see here. Uh, we divide it in, in modules. Uh, the first module, uh, Jacqueline Cato mm -hmm. from Instructional Connections. Mm -hmm. She's the VP of, of uh, the, the Instructional Connections. She meets with the faculty. They are taking her course. And uh, goes with them through through show him the, the coaches' roles and responsibilities of uh, what, what they need to do with the coaches, how to meet with them. The second module goes into the course overview and student needs assessment, okay? They have to know what, what type of students they're getting. Then on uh, module three, we go into the backwards design. I'm just going to make sure <laughs> over here, which is better. Uh, Sure. And the learning outcomes. <coughs> module four goes into accessibility. You want to? Want to go to module four? I just uh, before we move on, we just want to mention that uh, we practice what we preach. So what we this course meets the quality matters requirement. Um, our next step is to actually submit this course to be fully certified by quality matters. So if we look at the at the course, the menu on the left side, yeah, we're. We're an orange university, I don't know if you know that word. Um, so embrace the orange. Um, it has this, like the welcome. Um, again, some of the uh, standards from Quality Matters, uh, the students will know that there is a start year um, and what's, what's the course about and everything. Um, so the welcome core description and, oh my God, who's that nice looking guy over there doing well, <laughs> anyways, um, objectives and everything. And then we move into the syllabus where we actually um, provide, the, it's, it's just like a regular course, right? When we have all the uh, information about the syllabus and everything. Um, and again, like, like Liz mentioned, um, there are instructional designers assigned to uh, each faculty. So those are the, um, the designers, including pictures and everything. So the, the, the faculty will know who is the instructional designer assigned to their, to their um, course. Um, so there is also a, um, a timeline. Of course, those are nine modules. We start with module zero for some reason, but anyway. Um, but they have, they know ahead of time what is it that they're going to go over. Um, if there's going to be a live session, or if it's going to be a, um, to collaborate, or depends what the uh, activity is and everything. So they know about that. And going back to the accessibility, I don't know, I'll take it back to you. Because you're the expert on accessibility. Oh, uh, like, like I said, we, we teach them how to work with uh, integrity to create mini lectures, <coughs> okay? So that's also at the beginning of the course. And can you move a little bit down? Yeah. We also had a, a conference last year in uh, excellence in online learning that um, the main focus was accessibility. So we had Raymond Rose. Anybody familiar with Raymond Rose? Mm -hmm. oh, he was at our university. 
So um, he likes to scare people, I think. <laughs> but uh, he mainly, you know, he, he has a he has a good thing that uh, he focuses on accessibility and. Uh, yeah, he was our keynote speaker from our last year's conference. So I have some uh, invitations if you will. <laughs> I want to take advantage of it if you want to join us for this year conference, which is going to happen in a month from now. It's a going, month from today. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Sure. So if you want to take a look at it, more than welcome to it. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Anything else on accessibility? Okay. Um, we we help them with uh, how to create the syllabus that's accessible. We also go into PowerPoints and how to, you know, they have to have all text, uh, how, you know, to develop those presentations they're going to have. Mm -hmm. Maybe be a collaborate uh, to, to tell them how they have to have <coughs> closed captions, maybe with uh, integrity when they create their, their mini lectures. So we, we focus in all these aspects and we train them on how to use this software and make it accessible. Now accessibility has been, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, accessibility has been a hot topic on distance education lately, mm -hmm. right? We all know about those, uh, yeah, well, we don't want to talk about it. So we are very um, fortunate to again get the support from administration and it was this semester we just, we just barely launched a Blackboard Ally I don't know if you're familiar with that product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's installing or, in fact, you see those green meters? Mm -hmm. So that means that we're 100% accessible. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the Blackboard Ally checks for accessibility in all the documents that you upload and give you alternative of, uh, of yeah. showing the whatever documents you have within your course to how to make it accessible. Yeah. And it, it helps faculty on how to create it accessible. We also, like like Francisco said, we, we support them if they need any help with that. So it's, it's a nice product. Uh, again, it's embedded in Blackboard, so every faculty can go back and, and review and mm -hmm. make sure that the that red meter is not red, so it can move into at least <laughs> into the yellow or the amber, right? right? right. Now, there, yeah, there were some faculty that were asking, can you please remove that meter from my course? Because <laughs> uh, it looks yeah. ugly being red all the time. So, but no, that's, that's campus-wide. So right. no matter if you're teaching online or face-to-face -face or using Blackboard as a well enhanced or, or, or hybrid, uh, you have to be that. Do you have a question? Yes, I, I want to go back with her, her concern. Uh, Itself. Well, the yes. course has to go through the quality matters, right? Yes. Which quality gives you the guidance. Of the, of the course. Of the, the no, degree? No, in terms of the, the student's yeah. achievement. Uh huh. Yeah. We have a vice president for student success that analyzes all of our courses as far oh. as the, the course completion, the DFW. Oh, yes. And so oh, yeah. the online courses come into that. And one of the big things that she looks at, or staff looks at, is any differences between online and face to face courses yes, that's right. or hybrid courses? Mm -hmm. And also, look, since we have several campuses, is there any difference among campus delivery? Mm -hmm. So, that's just part of our overall review of our student success. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And if we can go back to the PowerPoint, um, where are we? Right there. So, here's some of the stats that have been uh, last night we were talking about these because. There were only, uh, well, so far 45 faculty being certified or been teaching large online in the past mm -hmm. two years now. Yeah, like I said, it starts with an initiative, with a, um, a pilot, now it becomes a, an initiative. So we continue to train faculty in every semester. Um, this uh, spring 2018, 46 sections have been offered as a large online course. Um, so that's a 3,500 plus enrollment. We don't have the official number yet. It's not ORD yet, right? So, yeah. uh, do you have the, do you have a, a ratio between the, the the courses that you have online with less than 60 students and 
Um, the courses you have more than 60 students. Yes. Um, there are courses that we have right now that are about 150 students okay. and, and more. So yeah, we, we do have even the ones that are close to the 60, uh, we contact them and see, okay, we have this initiative, you want to join us? There's some stipend there, so why don't you come on and take the, take the course and you qualify for it, just increase the cap to 50 more students and you should be able to get all these. Uh, if I teach a course with 30 students, mm -hmm. can I have a coach? No, it's minimum 60 students. To have a coach? Yes. Um, if we can go back to the criteria. Hmm. Is that the criteria? Yeah. yeah. So your course has to be a cap of 75 minimum. Money. It could be more than that, but it's going to be that 75 course. is what we require. But the enrollment should be at least 60 students in the course. And of course, you have to go through the, through the workshop and all of that to, in order to qualify to get the coach. Excuse me, but I'm still concerned about the, the faculty workload because we have an issue here in Puerto Rico uh -huh. in terms of the students that you have in in a face to face course and the students you have in online courses. Uh, some professors complain to have that having 30 students in an online course is too much because you have to work with all the interactions and you, you have yeah. to. to uh, uh, to work with the with the uh, transactional distance, then yes. you don't have the, that opportunity because you have many students, Correct. and that's why I have the concern. And sometimes here, if you have a, in some universities, if you have 40 or 50 students, they give you an extra uh, credit in your workload yeah. if you don't have any coach to help you. Yeah, but in this case. You're getting the coaches. I mean, you got 60 students. You get a coach. Of course, you have to go through this process. Okay. You get your stipend, of course. And uh, what was the other thing that I didn't say? Um, again, oh, this is voluntary, right? It is, we're not forcing any faculty to do this. Okay. But we do advertise a lot, especially <laughs> this line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. If I may, the biggest I challenge that you. Now, I was going to say at Bronx Community College, um, the online courses are capped as to how many students can be in it. And then once we reach that cap, then we open another section. Now, I as a professor, I could choose to teach both sections. I will be paid accordingly. But we, th they're capped, absolutely capped. Yeah. Something like this, and it's the same idea. It's that right. they're going to get more money, and they're just going to get the support. Now, the $2,000 is just to go through the, it's one time, right? It's not, but, but again, you will be teaching this course and you get the coaches and, and the department, the faculty, nobody has to pay for those coaches. Provost office will pay for that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. What's been the biggest challenge for you to implement this large course? Uh, I guess faculty understanding that there is the help is there. It's not that, oh my God, 60 students, now what I'm going to do? I mean, yeah, we, I think we do a pretty good job advertising, but still <coughs> that, yeah, I don't know, have you? Part of it is we've been really struggling with constrained classrooms and with large wait lists, and I think the faculty mm. in the departments that have the large wait lists are the ones that are really seeing they need to serve the students, and those right. who choose to are stepping right. up and saying, it's I want volume. to this is how we're program doing the to help our student body. Right. And so I think that has been, you know, part of the biggest impetus to do it is to better serve the students, provide better access to the coursework for the students. And, and you know, we only had 45 out of our 1,400 faculty that have chosen to do this. So mm -hmm. obviously it's not all. But they tend to be those in the classes that have large face-to-face -face classes also. Right, mm -hmm. right. And tend to be those that are doing the large online, mm -hmm. you know, Psychology 101. <laughs> yeah, Janet courses. Yeah, because I, I'm an IO psychologist and I'm thinking, okay, if I have a, a profession that I have to they have to teach a class with 75 students, okay, how is going to accept that change? How do I have them buy in into this? And that's what my, my question was, you know, okay, how to make them understand how you did that? It's all about students, right? That's what we're here for. 
I mean, that's, that we try to promote. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is this huge list. Um, you want to help students? Here's the, uh, here are the tools, right? I mean, it, it's, 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 it's yes, mm -hmm. a, a 12 volunteer. Mm -hmm. But talking to the faculty, uh, working with the faculty, faculty have to understand that there is a need for the students. Otherwise, students will take more time to graduate and I mean, other things that are involved in that or skipping a semester or not having the enough courses in one semester. So, of course, that will be delayed the time to graduation and all of that. But there's a lot of faculty willing to assist, uh, willing to participate. It's just that uh, it's be a it's challenge. Time. It is a challenge. It is a challenge for faculty. But again, we're there to support them. Um, with coaches, there is an instructional designer assigned to this um, faculty member who will help guide everything to come up with those, uh, uh, I mean, meet those uh, quality, quality uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. 